Hayes. Hey! I'm Mr. O, here with another oh, wow. moment at the Children's Museum of Houston. Cut, and that's a wrap. Thank goodness, I'm starving. I know what you mean. All five of my tastes are just screaming for some dinner. Wait, did you say five tastes? Mm -hmm. I think you have that wrong. Yeah, in school we learned about four tastes. Sweet, sour, bitter, and salty. And umami, the fifth taste. Before we talk about the tastes, let's talk about how we taste. Tongues, please. The surface of the tongue, as well as the sides, roof, and back of the mouth, and the upper part of the throat are covered in gustatory colliculi, or taste buds. The tongue alone is covered with over 100,000 of them, and each gustatory colliculus is sensitive to one basic type of taste. So whenever a gustatory colliculus comes in contact with a substance that has its taste, it sends a message to the brain identifying that taste. Sweet, sour, bitter, salty, or... Umami! In 1908, Kikunai Ikeda, a Japanese scientist, isolated a fifth taste, which he called umami. Now, umami doesn't have a direct translation, but the closest thing would be savoriness. Lots of food possess umami, including shellfish like shrimp, several vegetables like shiitake mushrooms, tomatoes, spinach, and celery, and some fermented foods like soy sauce. However, most foods we eat are actually a combination of two or more tastes, like salty and umami or sweet and sour. So how do only five tastes let us tell the difference between thousands of different kinds of foods? Well, don't get the five basic tastes confused with flavors. Flavors, which are actually a combination of a bunch of different chemicals and even sometimes textures, we can sense to identify all the different kinds of flavors that each different food has. And to sense flavors, we need to use both our tongues and our nose. Located at the back of the nasal passage is a small postage stamp sized sensory organ called the olfactory epithelium. It is responsible for your sense of smell. However, it also plays a role when tasting complex flavors. As we eat, some of the molecules of the food stimulate the olfactory epithelium. Your brain uses information from your gustatory colliculi on your tongue and your olfactory epithelium to identify flavors. Let me show it to you a different way. Before we begin, remember, science is fun, but it can also be dangerous, so always have a responsible adult helping you. We're going to test how our sense of smell is connected to our taste. For this, you'll need different flavors of jelly beans, a blindfold, and a partner. Please take any proper precautions regarding food allergies before attempting this experiment. First, separate out two of each type of jelly bean based on flavor. Make a note of what each flavor is. Next, put on a blindfold. While pinching your nose, have your partner feed you a jelly bean. Without letting go of your nose, try to guess the flavor. If you don't know, that's fine, but don't let go of your nose until after swallowing. Now eat the same flavor, but without pinching your nose. Can you guess it this time? Green apple. Try out some of the other flavors. What you'll likely experience is that it is much harder to guess flavors while pinching your nose. That's because you're blocking the olfactory epithelium. Without it, you only have your five basic tastes to help you guess the flavors. This is also why foods taste so bland when you have a cold or allergies are acting up. The mucus in your nose blocks off the olfactory epithelium from helping distinguish flavors. Bubble gum. Yeah. You can really tell it. Since we're correcting misconceptions like only four tastes, there's one other misconception we should discuss the tongue map. When I was in school, this is how we were taught about taste. Different areas of the tongue for the four tastes. I even remember seeing a museum exhibit about this. This map, however, is incorrect. The origin of the map is based on a mistranslation of a 1901 German paper that discussed minute differences in how fast different parts of the tongue detected different tastes. This mistranslation resulted in the tongue map seen in many science textbooks today. Multiple studies have proven that your taste buds are distributed across your entire tongue. So, when you taste something, you taste it with your entire tongue, not just one spot. This has been another Oh Wow moment from the Children's Museum of Houston. We hope your mind can come out to play.